Welcome back to Y254 Business News. My name is Miriam Masava. And before we went on a break, we were asking you, what is your tomato experience in your area code? How much are you buying one tomato in your market? Yes, you can be part of this discussion using our social media platform. That is Facebook. Our Facebook page is Y254. Twitter and Instagram, our handle is Y254 channel. The hashtag to use is Y254 updates. Or you can tweet me directly at Miriam and Masava. Yes, and to look into a final story, matters tomato is the price of tomatoes continues to go up in the country, leaving most Kenyans at the mercy of sellers for or forced to seek alternatives to the loud fruit. Vendors in the local markets now sell one tomato for as high as 20 shillings or 15 shillings, depending on the location and where the fruit has been sourced from. In Baringo County, the price of tomato has risen from 2,500 shillings per crate to 4,500 shillings following the scarcity of tomatoes. The high tomatoes prices have been blamed on the low supplies in the market occasioned by the recent heavy rains witnessed across the country, which does not offer conducive environment for tomato growth. <coughs> Yes, moving on now onto a discussion. Yeah, I want to know how much you're buying tomatoes in your area code. But to help me discuss this is Andrew Shonko, a business analyst. Welcome so much, Andrew. Thank you. First of all, I want to know how much you buy one tomato in your area code. I think the issue of tomato is across the board. Yeah. Because even at, uh, at my place where I, I am right now, you actually have to part with the uh, 20 shillings for you to get a tomato. And that means for you actually you have even to, to divide mm. the tomato into two <laughs> so that you can do lunch and another one you can do <laughs> well, <that's laughs> for <funny>. supper. <laughs> yeah. So actually the issue of um, mm. increase in price of tomato is actually across Mm -hmm. across the board mm -hmm. and this has actually been uh, as uh, the, the reason as to why this increase has been there is because we actually witnessed a very prolonged uh, period mm -hmm. of rain yeah. and actually tomatoes do not do so well with the very uh, the long rains. long periods mm -hmm. of rain so mm -hmm. actually that that is one of the reasons as to why the decrease in uh, the decrease in production of tomatoes mm -hmm. and also the that means the increase in the prices of tomato well, this tomato issue is touching on so many people. If I could just read some of the feedback and the comments. Yes, the hashtag to use is Y254 updates. Our, our Twitter handle is at what for channel. There's uh, this one called Grace Riggs who says there are no tomatoes in Kenya. Tunatoa TZ, that's why in expensive transport cost. But my question is, how did we get here? Yeah. How did we get here that we are actually importing tomatoes? I think one of the reasons as mm. to why we got in here, mm. uh, and I normally say this, is that uh, we are normally mm. not proactive when it comes to tackling issues that uh, deals with the common, uh, common energy or day-to-day -day living in our life, and we're normally reactive. Because uh, we, we know so well, and all the bodies that are involved when it comes to matters of agriculture in our country, they know so well that tomato and other produce the basic needs do not actually go well when it comes to the issue of rain. And we experience rain actually uh, from the month of October, November, mm -hmm. December, and January, which normally we do not experience the rain. Yeah. So this was actually going to happen. And I, and I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. So for me, I think uh, that is where we actually went wrong. But uh, we, we can say like, uh, we have alternatives. People can actually look for alternatives. You don't, uh, you don't have to use tomato for you to cook. And you can use alternative or, <laughs> or even divide, as I have said. <laughs> well, guys are complaining the alternatives are not nice, like the tomato we are used to. Mm. But there's one, Edwin Kiraku, who says, I'm here trying to understand why the price of tomatoes and everything in Kenya has gone up. Now, mm. what does it mean for a common one when the price of tomatoes goes up? Because these includes also inflation. 
Yeah. Uh, it affects our food basket. It affects yeah. our food security. So what does it mean to, to a common mwananchi? I think it it means a lot. That, it means like for you to be able to get a plate on your table, that means you have to part with more than what you've been uh, you've been paying for your plate of meal. Uh, because if tomatoes prices are up, that means even other commodities, including maize flour, including uh, potato, including uh, onion. Because mm -hmm. right now when you go to the market, the prices of the onion yeah. are are not actually how they are. They are each and every day. So that means for you to be able to get that plate on on the, on the on the table, mm -hmm. you have actually to part with more than uh, what you what you normally have to pay. And uh, this means that uh, the demand has uh, has not changed because you find someone is in a family of let's say for example four to five four to five children mm -hmm. plus mother and mm -hmm. father. That means sure. they actually have to dig more into their pocket. And if you look at our economy right now. Uh, the pocket that we are digging into, it's almost uh, <laughs> empty. Mm -hmm. So that, that means there will be a lot of challenges when it comes to even uh, being able to eat healthy. And mm -hmm. that means at the end of the day, your health is very important because it depends on the type of food that you eat, the type of uh, food that you'll be able to consume each and every day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, there's also another one who's called on Twitter, Hustler Nation 2022. He says, I agree that the problem with fresh food is in Kenya is logistics. I am here buying three tomatoes for 50 shillings. And the guy in the photo, oh, sorry, uh, let me leave it at that. He's buying three tomatoes for 50 shillings and he's blaming it on logistics. So I'm wondering, is the management the problem? How, how, what is the issue really? The, the farming process when it comes to when it comes to plantation, the fertilizer used, the pesticides used, the the method used, the transportation, the storage, even transporting from the farm to the market. What is the issue here? What, where are we going wrong, even as farmers? I think I cannot really, really uh, blame to farmers because mm. sustainability uh, actually is not a political choice. It's a, it's uh, it's not a, a technical uh, issue, but a political choice, and the choices that we make when it comes to the issue of sustainability. Look at the process that uh, that is actually there for that farm produce to be able to get from the from the farm mm -hmm. to the market. Look at, for example, right now uh, the roads that they are using. Mm -hmm. If you look at the type of roads that uh, these fa these farms are uh, farmers are using to get their produce to the market, they are not uh, they are not. They are not actually looking uh, looking very well, so they have to struggle. Others have maybe you you finding that there are some lorries that are actually uh, that are actually um, mm. stuck when they are trying to get this produce to the market, and that means the whole logistical process of getting that product from the from the shamba all the way to to the market is actually long. And the longer the log the logistic process, mm. that means at the end of the day the cost the cost of that produce will be high. Mm. If you also look again and at the also, tomato, it's, also it's, spoil along it's the a way. perishable, yeah, it's, it's a perish perishable, yeah. perishable, perishable good. So for me, I think we actually need to come up with systems that will actually be able to cater for these issues when they rise mm -hmm. as, as, a, as time goes by. All the agencies that are, are involved when it comes to the issue of agriculture, and you know agriculture is one of the big four agenda of uh, the current yeah. regime. Yes. So they actually need to force and look into investing more when it comes to the matter of agriculture and ensuring that uh, the common Mwanaenji, the, the Wanjiko actually is able to get the, the food uh, on their table in the uh, cheapest uh, way possible. <laughs> yes, they're saying that Kenya of today, tomatoes are now the same price as apples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are very funny. As we, they, how they make an issue to be so humorous is really interesting. But I want, as we finalize, I, I want to know, right now actually we are actually importing tomatoes from Ethiopia, but we've never had cases, even if it's there, it's very rare, the amount of Pro, the products we export is less than what we import. Mm -hmm. What can be done to improve such scenarios? I think that is one of the challenges that we actually have. If you mm -hmm. look at Kenya, I normally say Kenya is a, is a land of milk and honey, mm -hmm. but this land is in the, maybe in the wrong hands of people who are actually be, uh, taking care of it. Because yeah. if you look at uh, the climatic condition that our country is into, you'll find uh, 
there are people actually right now who are producing tomato and they are going bad in there because uh, of the logistical process that I was, I was actually t telling you. So we actually really need to invest into seeing uh, these logistics are actually a bit cheaper. Mm. Invest in roads that uh, this product are supposed to be ferried from uh, from the shamba to the to the to the market. Yes. We also need to support farmers in terms of uh, offering them with uh, seeds, because uh, when they have these seeds, they can be able to plant them in. Uh, do a lot of trainings to them, yeah. and also we, we we can look into other measures such as drying mm. drying uh, drying these tomatoes okay. because when they are dry they can actually be able to to last long yes final mm. comments way forward way forward for this uh, i think uh, it's all about uh, being able to know where you are mm. because uh, we knew this was coming yeah and uh, someone said uh, budgeting is not asking where my money went <laughs> is actually planning where you, your money will go into. Mm -hmm. So as an individual, because this is an individual level thing, mm. you actually need to look into your pocket and be able to manage your cash flow well. Yes. All the agencies that are involved, they actually need to up their game and be able to see that at the end of the day, they have been able to support the farmer and that farmer actually feel uh, the, imp the importance because you're getting people who are selling this pro that product at a very low prices mm. and the others are being discouraged even on uh, to continue doing the farming and so on. Well, thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you so much, Andrew Shonko, our business analyst, for making time to join us here on y 25 for Business Desk. Well, thanks so much for keeping us company here. We're going to leave you with a conference organized by Kipra and and, uh, uh, and University of Eldoret discussing matters Big Four agenda and what can be done to actually achieve the Big Four agenda. Thank you so much, Kathuria, for preparing such an amazing feature story. Yes, otherwise, from me, from my end, my name is Miriam Masava. Good night and God bless you.